Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, well, good afternoon as well. And good evening. This is your host, the White Collar Goon. Um, the creative and artistic manifestation of angels of politics. You know this. Remember, you are the news. Uh, you are the conductor. You are the archetypal superhero. But you must manifest that. And you must focus, um, emphasize, cultivate, enhance your spiritual gifts if you don't know what they are please get into alignment all right the mind body and soul meditate pray get into the word take time out for yourself and whenever i mean for yourself go into that inner sanctum go into the go into here go into here and, and get that going um you'll you'll find answers it won't be today it won't be tomorrow but you'll find answers uh that's for sure um so boom well first have you had a meal Okay, that's good. You've had a, you've had breakfast. Um, I had a juice earlier, but now I mean I'm on the water right now, and um, I gotta make moves soon. But I do have a word with you. I would like to have a word with you. Um, and whenever you have something to say, please reach out to the goon. Reach out to the goon. That doesn't mean me. I mean go into yourself first. When I mean the goon, I mean Father Shadow. Somebody says, "What is my shadow?" The shadow is the darkness. The shadow is the, the side of your spectrum, the spectrum of personality that you have that you don't show everybody. You have that persona when you go to the workplace. You have that persona whenever you're at the church or whenever you're at the, you know, you're at the mall, when you're at the movies, when you're with your homegirls. You have a certain persona that you unveil when you're with your, when you're comfortable with your friends, when you're comfortable after, you know, two, uh, you know, martinis. Um, you're, you, you unveil certain personas when, once you are at home. Um, but I'm talking about that goon. That is like, yo, like, okay, you're going to make me show my face. Like, you know, it's like, oh, when somebody, somebody does something, somebody says something, somebody has, um, somebody has been an obstruction to your path. And when I mean your path, it's like, okay, I was going this way. I was feeling this way. I was aligning myself with my purpose. And now you are in front of me and you're forcing me now to address this. Okay. So you must have me fucked up. All right. So that's what I mean by the goon. The goon is like, now I got to show a part of me that you didn't think was there, but like low key whole time you knew it was there. You just wanted to test me. Okay. So now like, let's, let's get to testing. So that is the goon. Talk to the goon first, get in tune with the goon, integrate your shadow, integrate your shadow. Don't always keep it hidden. What I mean, like that doesn't mean walk around in the streets and, and be turned up. Or sometimes the goon is like, you know, the sexual nature. Sometimes that goon is like, hey, like you, you, you're starting to knock on the gates. You know, you know, I have three gates. You, you, you made yourself to the first gate. Like you're, you're, you're in the, you know, vicinity of the pleasure principle. And you know, like, you know, my principalities, some women are going to be like, yo, like I don't really show this face until like, you know, after a few glasses of wine like i don't really show this face until like i've known you for a few months some girls are like hey i don't really show this face but now you're near my clitoris and okay your tongue is moving okay now like that that is the goon but for the for the most part for the most part they don't really show that face that often integrate that shadow become one with that shadow and almost it should be like a part of you where whereby like you know you can you have it on control you have it on demand you have it like okay, okay, like, you know, like, okay, like, don't, don't, don't try me, like, or in a certain sense, like, certain women are, like, don't even come to me with that bullshit, because you're not ready for this, don't even start something that you can't finish, brother man, like, don't even whisper in my ear, don't even, don't even do that, don't even come near here, because you know, whenever I get myself going, and I unleash the divine feminine, you're not ready for it, and trust me, whenever you start dealing with real women who have access to their divine femininity, and they have channeled it, trust me, you're not ready for it, I know I'm not ready for it, a lot of times it's been released to me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I wasn't, <laughs> I didn't know you were going to show that face, okay, so, these are the things, but, I have a conversation for you, um, I met this homegirl and she was like fit, like proper fit. She was from London and um, she had she had this, you know, unique look. She wasn't she wasn't a what you would call a black girl. And, and she definitely wouldn't be a, a white girl by any means. But so, I, you know, she had one of these, uh, I guess, you know, families of parents that were from and, and London is a is a is a melting pot. So let's say she came from ethnicities that that pre presented her with this very very uh you know 
bronze bronze type of skin tone, golden type of skin tone. Maybe she had some type of you know Latin mom and maybe some type of uh, you know maybe Lebanese or Farsi or some some type of Iranian some some type of you know maybe maybe Mediterranean father. But she, this was a this this woman was beautiful regardless but her look really stood out put it that way and um i worked with her in shanghai uh she was a part of my um well not my company but we all worked in the same company and she was really nice not only was she nice she was fit like she was like proper fit and then at the time maybe she's like 25 you know 26 so at that age where it's like you know and she knew she was sexy so she she you know <laughs> She was confident. She was confident, and 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 I like girls like that. I like. She had a type A personality. You know, she wasn't like, oh, like don't look at me. Um, like I know I'm hot, but like don't say anything to me. Like no, when she she was super sweet. Actually, she would be girls. She was she would be the type of girl that, like, feminists would hate. You know what I'm saying? Because she was articulate. She was confident, competent, intelligent. Worked a good job, you know, and had a great personality, spoke to everybody, but like women probably actually women who were like feminists would hate her because it's like, even though you exude the same traits that we want in all women, particularly women who are who want advancements, but, you know, advancement for like women rights, it's like they wouldn't like her by the simple fact that it's like. But you're hot, though. Like, you wear makeup, and, like, you, you show your legs in, in public, and you have a flat stomach, and, you know, you have long, flowing hair, and you're not a white woman. You know, like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, like they would not, they, would, they wouldn't probably like her. But she was, she was dope. Now, at the end of the day, me and her, we never, we never, like, uh, we never were in a relationship or anything, but she would have been my type. She would have been an archetype that I definitely, if I could have, uh, you know, put more time and effort into it i would have tried tried more but either way we had a date once date is an ambiguous term we went out for drinks once and um <laughs> i remember sitting down and just asking her some questions and i particularly like to know like how women are received whenever in general like you know in general i like to see how women are received because um there is this like misconception that women who are like ostensibly hot like apparently hot like like to the point where she's fit to the point whereby like she's distracting to some people like this this woman would be what i would classify as a pistol like like a hammer like oh shit like who the fuck is that type of girl i i have this um i have this inkling or i have you know studied this for long, for for a while i'm gonna say a long time i'm 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 not that i'm not that deep into the game but i've learned that women who are like that proper fit people presume that they're just like bombarded at all times and yes she does get a lot of attention but i will say because she's that fit would mean goes into the polarity the sexual polarity that she doesn't get a lot of guys to speak to her directly because they're intimidated you know and i feel like because she looks like that and she's confident and she smiles and she talks to people it's like i know there are girls i mean i know there are girls who will dislike her but i know there are a lot of guys who would dislike her as well they will dislike her because she's so pretty they will dislike her because she's so hot they will dislike her because the same way that women want you to be like just right for them like they want you to be handsome but not like extremely handsome they they don't they want you to be nice but like not like too nice like they want you to be like just right for them like it's a solo individual thing you know and women women are like that but i will say guys are like that too right so i've talked to many guys and i've spoken to many guys and they have expressed to me that when they get married or when they s settle down, and I hate that term, settle down, but when they get a girl who they want to, like, cuff, whatever the fuck that means, you know, like, when they when they get these types of girls, they want her to be pretty, they want her to be nice, they want her to be, you know, intelligent and feminine and, and, and competent and industrious and to a point, but it's like, they don't want her to be too smart, you know, of course, but, like, you know, but, like, at the end of the day, they don't want women who are what I would call, like, 
proper fit like like hammer fit like like yes like Gabe she's a she's a pistol because like when she walks into a room when she when she goes places it is dangerous like people are like yo what's what's going on like guys start fixing their ties women start looking around women start looking at their husbands like like there's guys who don't want that in girls you know they they don't they don't they don't want that in girls um i was watching this movie called burning is a korean movie on netflix and it's actually a it's, a it's a pretty decent film, but it shows these girls in Seoul, Korea, and they're out front and they're promoting their some products. But these girls are there's like music outside, and you see this a lot in Asia. But there's like music outside, and these girls are dressed in like cheerleader clothing, like you know they they actually are cheerleaders, and they're like promoting and getting you causing attention to bring people inside to 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 take part in a raffle or, or come shop with them. And these girls are like what they will call the 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 cheerleading type they're slim they're slender their stomach is showing they have the abdominal circumference and there's flat and you know they got the skirt and they're wearing pink and they got the makeup on and in seoul korea is like in a lot of places in southeast asia they have you know the plastic surgery so their their nose a certain way the eyelids are you know double eyelid like they had the full thing so it's like these would be like the hot girls right and um in in the in the film the protagonist is talking to one of the let's say managers or coordinators who like who coordinates these girls who to to do all of the cheerleading and, and the the spec the spectacle and shit like that and he he asks like hey have you seen this girl i'm looking for her? and she goes off and says yeah i haven't seen her in a while i mean she hasn't been here but you know look at these women it's like you know it's so hard for women you know like they men want us to be sexy but they they don't want us to be too sexy Men want us to have makeup. Men want us to wear makeup, but then they don't want us to wear too much makeup. Women, men want us to be, you know, like smart, but they don't want us to be too smart. And then she ends up saying, like, you know, you know what the saying is: "There's no place in this world for a woman." And uh, you're damned if you do, if you're damned if you don't. And I, I like that part, not because I think it's true, but it's like it shows the the. It shows the duality. It shows the complexity. It shows the the dynamic, you know, polarity that I would call the sexual polarity and the sexual politics. Because, you know, I will take it back to my homegirl. Like, she's hot. She's pretty. She's like proper fit. But I mean, when I asked her, like, you know, like how how are you received out here in Shanghai, China? Like, I'm pretty sure in London, you know, there are a lot of hot girls in London, and I'm pretty sure you did well for yourself in London. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, she tells me. Well, here in Shanghai, it's the same. And, and then she says, I traveled around. I mean, she was a traveler. She was like, it's pretty much always been the same for me. Like, it, ha it hasn't <laughs> She was saying it hasn't changed, you know? Like, so, you know, it, she didn't say, like, she didn't say guys don't approach her. Like, that, that wasn't what she said. But she was saying that, you know, I work out, I'm in shape. Um, and she didn't go into the fact that she works out and she was in shape. But she was saying, I know I, I look a certain way. So anywhere I go, I mean, I can be in China. I can be in England. I, I've been to America. And, you know, she says she's been to these different places. And pretty much everywhere she goes, she gets uh, she gets a lot of attention from men, right? I I would go as far as to say that there are a lot of women who, one, they don't they don't want that level of attention um, for their own personal reasons, but two, I think there's women who are aware that you know what I mentioned about guys before and what the woman from the movie says. It's like you know like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So they they rather will fall on the certain end of the spectrum of being like not as polarizing not as sexually uh attractive not as like head turning like who is this not to say that every girl has because every girl could be you know every woman is beautiful every woman is hot every woman is attractive but when i mean proper fit i mean like because she properly is into the fitness like she properly is into her health she she probably not probably she does not purposefully i mean intentionally eat certain things do certain things and 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 does do other things because of the fact that she wants to maintain her her look 
And this is this could be for vanity reasons. It could be for health reasons. It could be for spiritual reasons. It could be for her psychology. It could be just based on how she was brought up. Or it could be for fucking vanity. It could be like, yes, like I want to be hot. I like the fact that guys look at me because of that. That's the reason why I go to Pilates. That's the reason why I go to the spin class. That's the reason why I don't eat cheeseburgers. That's the reason why I don't eat meat. That's the reason why I don't do like there are girls who will tell you that and it's straight fucking forward. It's straightforward. It's straight at you. Like, it's not some, you know, algorithmic decision that was made by some artificial intelligence. And there was some, you know, genetic, you know, uh, hereditary DNA thing within me that made me wake up in the morning with the flat stomach at 27. And I just have these perfectly firm legs it's like no like yes there are some women who like and i will say with some like point zero 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 whatever percent that just have hit the genetic lottery and some girls just have the proportion of where where their food goes or where their weight goes it goes to their breasts or it goes to their bottom half and it, and it looks attractive but for the majority and when i mean 99.99 like yes those women who are quote-unquote proper fit proper fit those girls properly work the fuck out every day those girls properly are on a regimen and they treat their bodies like a nine to five job or maybe it's not nine to five job it's a 24 7 job do you get what i'm saying so I'm, I'm going off on a tangent but i really want to bring it bring it back to you guys that there are some women who know that like hey small town virginia like i'm, I'm pretty hot around here um Southeast D.C., I'm, I'm, I'm all right out here. Um, you know, small town Ohio, you know, small town Nebraska, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Like, you know, I can do all right. Like, you know, in the words of Amy Schumer, like in New York City, like I can, she can catch a dick anywhere. You know, like she's from Long Island. It's all right out there. It's a city. She can work all right. But there are there are very few women who know that once they are displaced or they are pulled from their home environment. And then they go to these major city hubs. To the Torontos. The Londons. The Tokyos. The Seoul Koreas. The Shanghai. Beijings. The Sao Paulo, Brazil. The fucking Santiago, Chile's, The Bogota or Medellin, Colombia. The, do you understand? The Miamis. The Los Angeles. These girls. They, there are women who know for a fucking fact. That... Hey, in South Dakota, I am Scarlett Johansson. I go to L.A., I become invisible. You know, it's, it's, it's not, and it, it's not like they are bad people there. It's not like they they lose their look there. They're just aware that there's a different level of women there. There's a different level of competition here. You know, like I was all right. Um, in, in small town England where I was living, I was doing okay in Manchester and Manchester is a big city for England. But then I took my ass to Hong Kong and it wasn't like that. Not to say that you lost anything there. Not to say that people were mean to you there. Not to say that people pushed you in the road there. It's like, no, like you went out to the bars and you saw what was in Singapore and you saw what was in Hong Kong and you were like, well, motherfuckers ain't really checking for me like that. Motherfuckers aren't really, they're not really receiving my energy in the same way like that. Like, damn, I'm not really getting the same type of, you yeah, know, like guys used to be keen where I was from. Guys were keen where I was from. I'm not saying they're, they're not going to be keen in, in, in Osaka. I'm not going to say they're not going to be keen in Istanbul. I'm not going to say they're not going to be keen in Tel Aviv or Sydney, Australia, but it's not going to be like that. It's not going to be like that because you're you're in a different pool. You're 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 in a you're in a different environment. You're in, not only in your are you in a different environment in a different pool. You have more competition. You have more competition. Do you hear me? There there are women who look differently than you, and that is going to be an asset for them. There there you you are not going to be a novelty. You might be a novelty to somebody, but when you look around and you look to the young Miss Korean there, young Miss Japanese there, young Miss uh, Indian uh, bombshell from Mumbai and from Delhi, it's going to be like, well, fucking hell. Maybe I don't want to walk around in Melbourne, Australia anymore. Maybe I don't want to go to the Bonsai Beach in in fucking Sydney, Australia, because it's like, yo, like we don't <laughs> we don't look like this in Scotland. We don't, we don't look like this in Oklahoma. We well, girls girls don't dress like this where I'm from in Texas. Girls are still wearing their sweatpants and their overcoat and their fucking. 
3x and 2x jumper that says uh, whatever their college university is on it with their yoga pants and their boots it's like and their hair is in a bun and they're okay with that because they know guys are still fucking lining up for them but that's not the case that's not the case when you went to san juan puerto rico that wasn't that wasn't the that wasn't the case when you went to Lima, Peru. Do you understand? So like I I I I guess I'm going at a lot of places here. I'm here to say women, I am your cheerleader. I am your 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 campaigner for the divine feminine. I'm just going to say this, girls. You need to align yourself with your purpose. Align yourself with your purpose. Because if you wanna, if you wanna, uh, well, most women are smart enough to know. Hey, if there's guys who are just looking at me for face value, man, I need to stay. I need to stay up in my environment. I need to stay where where I know everybody. I need to stay where I know what the girls look like. Because if I go out, if I really go out, if I really test test the waters out here and pack my bags and go to the city, you're gonna figure out. You're gonna figure out soon enough. One or two things are gonna happen. Two, one, you're gonna be like. Yo, these girls are fit. These girls hit the gym. These girls in California are not like the girls in the East Coast. I I'm, I need to adapt and adopt and assimilate. I need to be hitting Equinox too. I need to be going on my runs too. I need to be going to yoga and Pilates too. Or you're going to realize, yo, let me be comfortable. Let me be comfortable, confident in myself and be myself. And let me find the guy who just, uh, or let me find the purpose who is just going to, or let me just going to, let me carve my own lane and do it like that. But I will say there's a third there's a third level and the third level is girls come right back to motherfucking Virginia. They come right back to Maryland. They come right back to small town Ohio. They come right back to Nebraska. They come back. They come back. They come back because they realize it's like, man, I mean, Hong Kong was nice, but I wasn't getting the same type of love out there. I mean, L.A. was all right, but I mean, I, I just wasn't getting received. The, the, I wasn't getting that same love in San Diego. Like there was too many hot girls. <laughs> there was too many hot girls. I mean, I thought I was hot, but until I went to San Diego, until I went to Orange County, until I went to, you know what I'm saying? Like it just wasn't the same. It just wasn't the same. So like ladies have the confidence, but you cannot don't 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 allow the confidence be from some external force. I mean, that was my issue. I mean, clearly, like that's the reason why I've been deconstructing my ego for so long. Don't allow your confidence to be based on somebody else's, you know, perception of you. It has to come from yourself. Work on yourself. Develop yourself. You are the superhero. You are the archetypal hero. God bless. Color gun.